name is Tetu Matana. Tetepa e Tengaru. The village where I come from is called Waipai. Waipai Aitataki, Cook Islands. My name is James Colville Richmond. I was born in Paisley in 1935. Paisley, Scotland, there is, of course, naturally. I was born in a village called Waipai. And that's where, during the war, all the soldiers used to come to my uncle's place. And that's why they call it Hollywood. And my uncle used to make home food grog with orange. And the Yankees used to love it. I remember that. <laughs> it is. Is that why it's called Hollywood? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Yankees, the Yankees, Yankees used to come and have a little yeah, 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 call And they still call yeah. Hollywood up to today. <laughs> they still call Everybody, Everybody call Hollywood. Quite by Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Still do that. Now, when I was growing up. <laughs> Cut! <laughs> you you, you can't do that. <laughs> it's all right. I knew you'd die yet, Tina. I was so pleased you didn't show up. I thought you might pull it off. I was brought up in, born in Paisley, brought up in a place called Lockfield, which is just outside Paisley. And if you go any further out from Paisley, you're in the middle of the countryside with uh, farmlands and Clydesdale horses and so forth. The Paisley itself is famous for the Paisley pattern, uh, which was famous all around the world. I think it's probably no longer known, but it was very famous. And also for the Paisley Abbey, which is a very, very old abbey. And there are, I remember seeing pictures of the monks catching salmon of the battlements of the monk of the monastery and the river the black cart and it was so dirty when i grew up that there was nothing growing in it whatsoever but by the time i'll uh, by now those they're catching salmon again anyway that's where i was uh, born and brought up it's in the south of scotland my mother is named kaisari she actually come from samoa and met my father in in Aitutaki in Waipai and my father's name is Tirupa'i Tingaru. My mother was, wait for it, Jean Mary Nicol Yule Chamos. Chamos being part of the Cameron clan and my father was Richmond, well William Richmond and his, his people were partly Irish and partly English and uh, they met in Paisley, Scotland and married and had me. My mother have got so many sisters and brothers. I think there's about probably nine of them all together if I remember it. As I was growing up in Waipai and particular one brother, he was my favorite um, uncle. And they had a big fight with the other uncle. I remember that and then he said I would never ever want to live in Otaki and he went to Samoa. His name is Mosi. Tell me about your mother's family. Well, it goes back as far as my grandfather, who reminded me of Stalin with a grey moustache and all dressed in grey and his favourite saying was, children should be seen but not heard. Very non-humorous sort of fellow. But he had an interesting background. He actually was in Russia at one time as a salesman for the Paisley Mills and the Paisley Pattern, Paisley Thread at one time. My father's family, I uh, really only know, know about my Aunt Kate, who died when I was very young, and that was as far as I go with my father's family. No idea who the grandparents were or anything like that. Tell me more about your mother. My mother <clears throat> used to make a lot of prop for the girls when they used to go to the ball and she's a very well known sewer and very clever and then when she died they put her sewing machine on her grave and it's still there and every time I go home people are always telling me come and have a look at your mum's sewing machine it's still there and she's very very clever and all her brothers and sisters worship my mum when she died, I remember the whole family was crying on the bed and I was only a kid growing up and I'll never forget that. I wish I'd known my mother 
when I grew up, I didn't. My stepmother, they called her Mama Bly, because Mama Bly over there, she's got such a big mouth, and when we have a kai and she always telling everybody off, don't touch this, don't do this. So everybody in the village called her Mama Bly. But deep down, she's not that bad, really. When she came over here to Australia, she apologized what she did, telling us kids off and everything. I said, Mum, don't worry about it. It's gone, finished. And that's my mum apply. Everybody knows her. Timata Asin is her name. She's got a lot of sisters living in the world. Big family. And she taught me how to make poke, has him do everything. Clean your house and everything. You get up in the morning, you make your bed, tidy up before you ever do anything. And she's a very, very hardworking woman. And she always taught us to be tidy at home, always clean your house. Tell me about your father's family. Well, my father, I have only one clear recollection of my father. And that was when we uh, went fishing in a Keppel Pier in Millport when I was very young and he got a fish hook stuck in his hand and we had to walk all the way from Keppel Pier back to the little township in Millport to a doctor who froze his hand and took the fish hook out. And, uh, he spent so much time travelling between Paisley and Glasgow and running this factory over a factory making tank parts for tanks apparently and uh, he got pneumonia and died when I was about uh, four. And that's really all I remember about my father. What is your earliest memory? My earliest memory is of catching caterpillars from the nasturtiums at the side of the house. But apart from that, my earliest memories were of the war. We had an Anderson shelter built just outside the house and when the sirens went at night time, we had to, everybody to rush to the shelter and sleep there all night until the all clear went and we watched the Sarah, we watched the the searchlights in the sky and we and hear the ICAC guns going boom 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 just outside our house and uh, we, we would see the searchlights picking up aeroplanes whether they were our planes or German planes we never knew and uh, but in the morning we'd go up the kids would all go out in the street outside the house and pick up pieces of shell shrapnel from an, I made a collection of shrapnel and that was the earliest memories I had. And then, and then we used to live in a place called Rossi, which was down uh, on this, in the banks of the River Clyde, where there was a submarine base. And we saw ships coming in with holes blasted in them, and dead sailors being brought ashore, being piped up to the cemetery. And it was an exciting time for kids. We didn't realize how, how bad things were for other people, but uh, for kids growing up at that time, boy, it was exciting stuff. It really was, except my, my father died because of the war, not during the war, but because of the war. And uh, yeah, it, it was so exciting to live at that time. We were, and then all of a sudden there was bonfires in the middle of the street. And years later, the tarmac in the middle of the street was all burnt away because of the massive bonfires they had at the end of the war. And the pipes going, and people getting drunk all over the place. The end of the war was here, the VG Day, victory over Germany. And then later on, VJ Day, Victor over Japan. I remember these things very clearly. Although at that time I'd only been by the end of Japan, probably 10 or so at that time. You're old enough to remember what it was all about. I love music and I like to go every Friday and Saturday to a place in Wellington called the Empress Ballroom Dancing. And, and that's where I met Jim. We used to, I used to go to the ballroom that Tito was talking about, the Empress Ballroom, and I saw her there. But we actually didn't meet until I met her in Delmonico's, which is a jazz club, coffee lounge jazz club, um, very close to there. And when I saw her uh, in Delmonico's, uh, with her hair all done up and so forth, I couldn't really tell where she came from. I didn't know she was an Islander. And she was a ball going on and uh, all the guys in the band were cluttered around her, you know, and talk, trying to get a date with her. And she said I stood on her foot to be preemptive, to stop her dancing with other guys. I didn't remember that. I knew I was trying to get close to her. 
because she was kind of special. Just, she really was. And there's a photograph of her just over here, and roughly around that time, just a few years later. You can see what she looked like, you know. And uh, she was very, very special. From I had never met anybody like her, to be honest. You know, coming from Scotland, and uh, I've regretted it ever since. <laughs> She likes coconut sauce and I like whiskey. What can I say? I do. When I met Tiru, I was actually the youngest plant manager of Ford Motor Company worldwide. I was 27 and I was plant manager of a sec the second plant in, in Australia, and in New Zealand rather. New Zealand. And um, so I had a pretty good idea. I felt pretty confident in myself. I mean, we went out and bought a shop between us. Tiru and I bought a shop. Which we hated, to be quite honest, after we bought it. And uh, I had feelings about Ford Motor Company. There was talk about it closing down. And uh, we went for a holiday to New Zealand, to Australia, landed in Double Bay, and we thought, uh, this is what Australia is all about. Everybody lives like Double Bay people, you know? Wonderful place. I think we'll stay here. So uh, we were I, there for two months. I quit with Ford. I never, never went back. I phoned them up and said, uh, do you mind if I don't come back? Because I've already trained people to take my place. And uh, it was well received. We yeah, bought, we we bought, bought a sandwich shop. shop in King's Cross. Yeah. Just outside King's Cross. And Jennifer was only a couple of months old. Yeah, Jennifer was just a couple of months old. But yeah, it was very difficult shop. to run a sandwich shop and look after Jennifer. Yeah. And it was a lousy place anyway. But we, from that we bought a, shop, bought in a restaurant. Yeah, in uh, Kuji. Kuji. And we had a ball there. We stayed there for many years. Ten years. Well, it wasn't probably ten, yeah, but it was a long about. time. Yeah. We stayed there and uh, made quite a lot of money. We bought so many new cars, like lost count. Yeah. Uh, Name the cars we used to have. And we brought up uh, GTS, Jennifer, Monaro, Kingswood, yeah. sports car. Yeah. And, four mini mocks. Mini mocks, yeah. We had four <laughs> mini mocks we had. That's where your inheritance went, though. And the jack, we bought a jack. No, green. that was later, that was later. A but green, anyway, <laughs> a green jack. we brought up the kids. Uh, we used to put a sign up on, the, on, the, on our restaurant in Coogee that said, uh, go on fishing. And uh, we'd just close the damn place and go out and we'll leave close for the day. And we used to go down Coogee Beach and then Brunty Beach for the kids with Terapai and Jennifer down the beach instead of working. And, and then when Otta and them came here, we took them down to our restaurant. Yeah, we took them down. We, we had, had a ball big party. And had, but, the car party from the Aitutaki came over here. Yeah, Roroton we dancing trip. Yeah, from to the restaurant and we drank all night and went swimming all morning. And they got into trouble. <laughs> I was missing being involved in production, management and so forth. And I, I got a job at Kamalco, uh, in charge of rolling mills for a while. And, and then from there I eventually got a job with um, electronics where I eventually became an executive in Teletronics, production executive, manufacturing executive. Um, and all that time, so I sometime during that period, we met a couple of guys on the street from Aitutaki. I was Kuru and Victor. And we put a group together, just for fun, no idea what we were doing. I wanted them to dance the traditional dances of the islands, but dressed up in soul gear, white pants and, and little waistcoats. Uh, but they oh gee, that's not traditional, so we never ever did it. So they kept to the traditional style, which went out of style. And, uh, but then we had already gained a little bit of experience in playing music and so forth, and we formed a group with a guy called Dooney, Dooney Anderson, who was working for me. He came out for a job as a fork truck driver, and I said, I didn't ask him about that, if he could drive a fork truck. I said, if you play guitar, he said, yeah. I said, could you hire it? And we became very, very close friends, and he became our lead guitarist for a long, long time. forming a group and playing music. Uh, I was an executive at 49, when I was 49, an executive at Teletronics, 
manufacturing executive and uh, had the thing, all the thing that all good executives get, you know, the high blood pressure, heart pains, big salary, mind you, big on the art trip uh, away, you know, uh, and uh, then a triple bypass at 49. At that point I decided, hey, this is going to kill me. So uh, we decided that we could work and reform a proper group and we did and we ended up working at clubs. Um, I don't know why, but some people recognized I was not Polynesian when I was on stage. I don't know why. And uh, so I used to dress up as a captain. No, not that anybody ever said silk to me. I don't want to think of it. But uh, I was dressed up as a captain, all the rest of the Polynesian now. We had a great, we had a great band, we had a great group. Because one thing we did, we played, everything we played was in uh, English. It was fairly shells and things like that, any song like that that, that people could relate to. There were other bands around, but they were all playing island music, which uh, you could do a floor show, but you couldn't do a whole night. And uh, what we were doing was a whole night's work, like uh, four hours sort of style and playing music, but it was, um, any island music we played was in, mostly it was in English, English words. I'm a to do the food, uh, island food for the clubs. At that time you couldn't do it now, but at that time we could. Uh, we did uh, we did the food for the island food, but it wasn't island food. It was um, it was Pacquiao food good. prepared in, the, in their ovens yeah. and presented on coconut, uh, on, on banana leaves and wire baskets and, uh, and brought into the club and on with the backing of the drums and so forth, making everything exciting. And ladies and gentlemen, tonight you have to eat with your fingers. And everybody accepted that. It was wonderful times. I don't think you could do it again nowadays because of insurance and one thing or another. But we had a ball. And the other thing was they used to, the club used to uh, book us maybe uh, four weeks ahead, put the big photographs up we give them, and take the money from the people, take the bookings, and simply give us the money as we walked in. I mean, we'd phone them up in the morning and say, how many people you got? Oh, we've got 130, 150 people for the night tonight, whatever it was. And they, as we walked in, they'd give us the cash. That was it. Simple stuff. You wouldn't do it nowadays. <laughs> so that was uh, how we got, how we uh, we worked for a long, long time um, yeah. in Sydney. Huh? We, we love entertaining. I used to cut lawn as a business. I had a lawn mower at the back, three lawn mower and a trailer. My sister, I used to get my sister to come and help me. And I'll never forget the day we cut this lady's lawn and my sister and I chopped all the trees and it was pouring rain. And a lady came home and she goes, why did you do that? I says, you don't have to pay us. Forget about paying us. I'll never forget that. Cutting lawn. And then I got fed up cutting lawn. And then I said to that, I want to go selling. So I went to the city in Sydney and I've got a job selling clothes in the shop and I love selling clothes. I met so many in New Zealand and I've worked in KTs for a long time. You used to ask me to come and work with you at night time. And after you I'd never done, did. And uh, you hated. I hated it because I've been working all day doing something else. And you never helped me to I know I didn't help you because yeah. it was your job. No. You bought an Italian restaurant. Holanda. And Tito's Polynesian, and the, Ma the Maori guy I was working with was in the kitchen, and, and a Chinese guy was doing our dishes, no, and the waitresses were all Samoan, and that was okay. in an Italian restaurant. Yeah. And we even had a piper once or twice walk through the place playing the bagpipes, and a Tahitian guy sitting in the corner now and again playing the guitar. 
It was very cosmopolitan, should we say. And we had that for a while, we sold it to somebody else who did failed miserably and sold it back to the original owners, by the way. Well, we moved on to... We came up here. And we came up here, yeah. We opened a theater restaurant. And then we went on the tall ship cruises. We went on the tall ship cruises. Five cruise. years we were on there. Quite that long, but pretty close. Every night we used to work on the boat. Yeah, every, and then we did the resorts after that, representing the tall ship cruises. That was a lot of fun too, we did that for a couple of years. And lately we worked on Treasure Treasure Island for a couple of years, every weekend. And now we have a few people one thing here we now forgot, again. One thing we forgot, this is the bingo queen. Of, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is the bingo queen of, uh, of the Gold Coast. What she else is well can known I do? As what else can I do because I enjoy it? And a couple of, a couple of months ago she won $2,000 and, and turned around to her friend and gave her a thousand bucks. Not bad, eh? <laughs> because my father always say, and give, and you and shall, be, shall taken. be given. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, shall be given. Yes. That's what I am. True. That's what you are, my dear. Yeah. That's it. We sing the last song? All right. Okay. That's the end of our story. Now Good night, sweetheart, and it's time to go.